Hi there. So glad that you could come. We want to talk about the history of Homer G. Phillips and the veal as much as we can. Um, do you remember how Homer Phillips got started? Yes, Mamie. I'm Johnny Farrell. I'm from Homer G. Phillips, graduate of Homer G. Phillips High School School of Nursing, class of 1968. Uh, Homer Phillips Hospital started out of a need for an a hospital to serve the African American community. Uh, and it was named in honor of attorney Homer G. Phillips, who, of Homer G. Phillips, who fought for the hospital and actually died before he could see it come to realization. That is so true. Uh, back in the day, uh, they only had one hospital at first, the city of St. Louis. And they had uh, uh, still had segregation at that time. And they had um, one nurse who pretty much took care of the black people at that hospital. It was called city number one back then. And as you said, the need, the need arose where they needed more help because uh, the influenza came out in 1918, I think. And it was such, such a horrible experience because it's kind of like COVID now. There were lots of people sick and they decided that they needed to have, they needed to separate um, the facility where they had more room for black patients. And so they found a place to have more room and that meant they had to have more nurses and more doctors. So that, that there was a need and so that's how they ended up progressing. Um, unfortunately, the black people had uh, very little lighting in the hallways. Uh, the area was, was cold. And so uh, attorney Homer Phillips saw the problem and decided that he wanted to do something to get us a better place to have a, a care center. Hadn't even thought about a hospital at that point, but then as time evolved, he fought for a hospital for black people in the St. Louis area. What can you tell us about our last class at Homer Phillips as the School of Nursing? Well, I could very easily say they saved the best for last, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I won't. Uh, Homer Phillips Hospital, Homer D. Phillips School of Nursing was more than just uh, education. It was an experience. It was a legacy. It is a legacy. Is. And we still have an active Homer G. Phillips Nurses alumni today. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In fact, I started my day off on a meeting with the alumni. Uh -huh. uh, being a child growing up in the South, I always wanted to be a nurse. It's hard to get into a nursing school in the South, being a person of color. And I, my sister would often listen to KMOX at night, where mm -hmm. we could pick it up, and heard about Homer G. Phillips Hospital and School of Nursing. And I set my sights on it, and now I'm here. You cannot put the experience that I got at Homer Phillips into a condensed uh, conversation. Mm -hmm. Nurses from Homer Phillips are known not just locally, nationally, but worldwide, mm -hmm. and have worked all across the world. And when you went in, when you finished nursing school, and you went into another area and said you were a graduate Homer Phillips, it was almost an immediate hire. Yes, yes, that is so true. That was my experience too. Once people knew that you graduated from Homer Phillips you were able to work almost any place because they know that the training was excellent. In fact, I would say superb. And I say that because we got so many compliments from our nurses that graduated. Homer Phillips graduated more than a thousand nurses. And many of the nurses, not just in the South, was it hard to get into a nursing school but even here in St. Louis, it was difficult to get into nursing school. Uh, I graduated in 64, and I put in an application at Barnes, at Jewish, at St. Louis, and I was turned down at each one. And I'm not bragging, but I was on the Honor Society, and I was the second, you know, 
I had good grades. I mean, I was not at the bottom of the list. I had good grades and I couldn't get into a nursing school. Well, I didn't know until after that, that they only accept one or two a year. And if you didn't happen, and in one school, the only reason they accepted two is because you had to share a room. And so they didn't want to put a black and a white person in the same room. So that's why they accepted two. Where they had single rooms, they only accepted one a year. So out of a thousand nurses that graduated from Homer Phillips, had we not had Homer Phillips, there were, probably would have been more like 10 a year, or not even that many to graduate. Right. So. And what a lot of people don't realize or have not been exposed to, Homer Phillips was an economic base in the greater Bill yes, area. Yes. At the time we were at Homer Phillips, there were, that particular area had a lot of businesses mm -hmm. and not just mom and pop confectionaries. They had right. grocery stores, they mm -hmm. had restaurants, they had uh, drug stores. Mm -hmm. Churches, a lot of the churches are still there. And this is where I can say, with me coming to St. Louis, I found my roots. Mm -hmm. I planted my roots. I won't say found, I planted. And one of the churches, Antioch, I think just about every nurse that was a Baptist attended Antioch yes. if they came from outside of the area. Yes. They took us willingly and lovingly into what they call watch care. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one of our favorite restaurants in the Ville area was Billy Burke Restaurant. Yes, it was. You got your money together, you went to Billy Burke's and got your hamburger and cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, and I'm saying this to say uh, that that area, to have seen it when it was flourishing and to see it now, it's heartbreaking. It is. And to know that Homer Phillips was not just a school of nursing, or not just a training facility for African American doctors. They had a medical record program. They had a radiology program. They had a laboratory program where they trained people in those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked at Homer Phillips until its closing. I was the emergency room supervisor at the time of its closing, and possibly was the last Homer Phillips graduate to work at the hospital in the outpatient clinic. Mm -hmm. That that was such a trauma to have been out on leave at the time that it closed and to get a phone call to say, I don't know what's going on at Homer Phillips, but they got police and helicopters over there because they were actually treated, treated them like uh, they did the civil rights workers in the South. They had the dogs there. They had the helicopters flying around. and policemen on horseback and those kind of things, images are still in your mind. Yes. So uh, don't look at Homer Phillips or the Ville area as never been a flourishing area. And it's still have an active organization called For the Ville that is still working toward keeping that area viable. Mm -hmm. And there's another fight going on that it's politically, but it's also an injustice to the name, to the legacy of Homer G. Phillips Hospital. And that I won't expound on now because that fight is going to, is going to continue. Well, I think that's good. That's a good point because the comparison between the Ville then and the Ville now, it is heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And the, the current issue uh, we can address that because several people have asked me why do the people from Homer Phillips not embrace this urgent care being named after Homer Phillips? And I could go down a different route, mm -hmm. but would you want to name some of the high school after David Duke? Hello? I feel the same way about naming a three-bed unit urgent care center that right now cannot accept Medicare or Medicaid patients because they have not been approved for that. It's not in an area accessible to the Ville area. It's actually built in another area mm -hmm. downtown of Jefferson and Cass. And, to the, and for the developer who has ex 
been responsible for a lot of those families who it would serve if it, if it was a full service hospital. Mm-hmm. Their property was also taken, so he could buy that. And in my personal opinion, he's not really trying to look for that African American healthcare dollar. He's looking at the NGA, the federal government center that's being built down there. And as a Homer Phillips, is a uh, graduate. Uh, who worked there until it's closed. It's a sense of pride for everybody who came through, whether they were born at Homer Phillips, whether they worked at Homer Phillips, or whether they protested when they closed Homer Phillips. It's a sense of pride. It is a political issue. uh, And I think now that you've said that, that people will understand that it's out of respect for Homer Phillips, that if we're going to name something after him, it should be something much more impressive than an urgent care that really isn't a hospital. And for a man who lost his life fighting for this hospital. Oh, yes. And And that that murder, that assassination has not been resolved even to this day. So that is an issue. But you did mention some key points, the the Billy Birds and the um, Tandy and Annie Malone's Children's Hall. Turner there were right. There had, we had Sumner High School, which is the first African American uh, high school west of the uh, Mississippi, and we had Simmons Grade School. So uh, we had a thriving the whole, community. The old Poor Row College, who trained a lot of cosmetologists. That's true, including Madam C. J. Walker. That's true, and um, a lot of people didn't. Um, could go to work at Homer Phillips because they offered so much. Not only did they offer many jobs, but as you said, they trained in medical records, they changed in radio, trained in radiology, they trained physical therapists. We had a whole gamut of services offered, and many of the people that lived in the area could walk to work, Absolutely. which made it nice. And. Um, it was a very thriving. What I really liked about it was black children, whether they were poor or, or barely making it, they could see black doctors. They could see black nurses. They, could, they had something to help to motivate them because if they could do it, I could do it. Right. So our children don't have that now. And that's the downside of, you know, not being in a neighborhood where we can support each other. Um, but all of this came about because of Jim Crow. Right. You know, and the so laws. many of my classmates who grew up in St. Louis, who went to Sumner High School, who say they would walk past Homer Phillips on, going back and forth to school, saying they wanted to be a nurse because of Homer Phillips, yes. and seeing the nurses in their starched white uniforms and their white shoes, and yes. you didn't even think of having a ruin in your stockings because you couldn't wear them pants at that time right <laughs> and that was a sense of it is a sense of pride I, I don't want to keep referring to it negatively in the right. past because I'm still proud to be a Homer Phillips graduate and I am too and I'm so proud of our doctors because we had so many wonderful doctors I mean we had doctors that are world renowned Absolutely. Dr. Venable is one of them he was the first one to um, discover that HIV showed up in the eyes And he was uh, a doctor who also had to endure Jim Crow. He was the second in his class, and yet uh, he had a very hard time um, finding so many places wouldn't accept doctors to train. They would be okay in college, Mm -hmm. but then when they got a chance to do their internship, many of the hospitals would not accept them. They wouldn't allow black doctors to practice. So we had uh, one of the best Uh, training programs for interns. We had skilled doctors who were just good. Now some of the doctors when the hospital first started, they got doctors from WashU and St. Louis U who helped to get started. But again, because of racism, um, they wouldn't accept them in their hospital. And so uh, that's how Homer Phillips came to be such a major part of our world. And actually a lot of research on different uh, things that are currently used in healthcare was done at Homer Phillips. That's true. That's true. And, uh, you know, so, which also keeps that legend, uh, that tradition, or uh, that sense of pride yes. going. 
And it is a sense of pride to see black doctors thrive and to do such wonderful things. Because back then, um, black patients could only go to the basement of Barnes Hospital, the basement where they pick up the morgue and the trash, uh, which is an insult to injury. But um, that's where black people went when they went to, we had uh, St. Mary's took black people, uh, but other than that, there were very few places you could go to get treated. Yeah, and the thing about it, having worked the emergency room up until it closed, uh, it was always, even though it was always taken as a joke or an expectation, you know, when you brought in a major trauma, and you see that person a week, two, three weeks, one month later walk out. You know, there was always a reputation, Homer Phillips, if you were cut, a shot, or stabbed, or whatever, accident, go to Homer Phillips. But if you had a medical problem, but that's not true because I saw a lot of medical surgical patients who came in at, in a uh, near fatal or near uh, more death state and they actually walked out too because they were with the population of healthcare providers who cared about yes. their outcome yeah. and when they would you know some of them you would see them come back and they'll come back and they would tell you I want to go to Homer Phillips and they would sometimes say thank you that's true because the patients were treated with respect and care and our doctors thrive for perfection uh, there were doctors who were so good that some of the doctors from Marshu and St. Louis would come over to watch them and see how they did their surgery and how they did this. Uh, it was amazing the, the accomplishments that they made. Yes. And as I said before, some of them are world now and we just can't imagine. And Dr. Whitaker and some of the doctors from uh, before I came along uh, were well known. Mm -hmm. not only in the area, but in other areas as well. And actually, Ben from Monroe, Louisiana, there were several of the doctors, African-American doctors, that, who actually trained at Homer Phillips. One of the uh, nurses, one of them was married to one of the nurses, who was instrumental, part of instrumental in me being at Homer Phillips, because my mom and my dad, you know, they had me talk to Dr. Harry, I mean, Mrs. Harry's, Harriet Foster, her husband was a doctor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because they were kind of leery about sending the baby girl boy to St. Louis to go to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, so those doctors, like you say, they're renowned. They came back to Monroe to work. Mm -hmm. And there's a documentary out, The Color of Medicine, I'll bring that up, where they even reference Monroe, Louisiana, and Dr. A. Pierce, who they brought a team down to Monroe to the charity hospital to perform surgery on a patient mm -hmm. and reference them in a neg negative term, but the patient survived. Yes. So yes. those are things that, you know. Yeah, Homer Phillips saved a lot of people, mm -hmm. and we can't even count them all. And as you said, they used to make jokes that if John F. Kennedy had got shot in St. Louis, Martin Luther King as well. Uh, yeah, he'd be he'd still be here. Mm -hmm. And and I learned that from my experience because when I left Homer Phillips and I went to work at Christian Hospital in the emergency room, their gunshot room, everybody was all excited. We got a gunshot room. We got a gunshot. Well, uh, what's the problem? <laughs> you know, we've been dealing with this for years. No mm -hmm. big deal. But. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I'm so glad that we had this talk. Uh, there was a couple of things I wanted to mention um, about Eugene Mitchell. He was a medical director and uh, Minnie E.T. Gore, the uh, director of nursing for uh, the school and for the hospital, uh, was a remarkable person. Uh, Ella Brown and Lillian Daniels. Um, there were so many. Mm -hmm. um, that was just special people. Miss North Cross over the operating yes. room. <laughs> she was like a soldier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is there anyone particularly that stands out for you? Well, I would say Geraldine Phelps, okay. who was a director of the School of Nursing. Okay. And Miss Phelps had a genuine love for the students and to see us 
move forward and mm-hmm. to be successful, I'll put it that way. Mm-hmm. And she would have wouldn't have a problem calling your side if you were not keeping your keeping your grades up, focusing on your education or whatever. And living in a dormitory like that, you were really under a microscope. You mm-hmm. had to sign in sign out rather, sign in, you had a curfew, those kind of things, you know, probably would have happened if I stayed at home too, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, but uh, dormitory life was interesting, mm-hmm. you had your typical female interactions, positive right. and negative, but I think we all left as friends. Right, we did. But I would say Miss Phelps had a whole a lot to do with it, and in working uh, in the emergency room, I had an emergency room supervisor who probably didn't like me at first, but when she found out I passed state board, she gave me a big hug because she said it was the first nurse she had to pass state board the first time around in over 10 years. Really? Uh-huh. Wow. You know, my thing was we had to go to Jefferson City to take state board, and when I got on that bus to go to Jefferson City, I said, this is the last time I'm going to ride a bus to Jefferson City. <laughs> and, <laughs> It so happened, that's the way it turned out. But to try to name the people who really had an impression, made an impression or indelible mark on my nursing profession would be hard to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there were so many. They all had a, played a positive role in yes. who I was then and who I am now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We had a lot of excellent people. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, if there isn't anything else you want to um, well, I do want to say, Mamie, that there's a book coming out written by Candace O'Connor about the Bill neighborhood. It's been, it's been published. It should be out by March 1st. It's called uh, Climbing the Ladder, Chasing the Dream. Okay. Uh, so we'll be on the lookout for that. Okay, and, and that's written by Candace. Candace O'Connor. Okay. And that would give you more perspective or introspective about growing up in the Bill. Because I did mention some of the high school at one point in time, mm-hmm. but that's just one of the things. And Candace goes in depth about a lot of other things, and especially about Homer Phillips and his legacy. And that book is coming out in the next couple of weeks. It should be out. It's it's already pub in published print in print. Okay. With the supply chain, there may be some shipping. Okay. Uh, there is a. a book signing going to happen so just keep your eyes open but they'll probably be listed in one of our journal of the American publications mm-hmm. but it's going to be at uh, Left Bank Bookstore in the Central West End Okay. and you can pre-order the book on Amazon and probably at some of your local bookstores. Okay sounds good one thing I forgot when you were talking part of our nursing training was uh, with pediatrics we used to go to uh, Anti- uh, to uh, Antioch Baptist Church for the uh, daycare mm-hmm. to, to, to uh, work with the little children I thought that was wonderful and one other thing we didn't for our mental health we used to have to go so it was called Malcolm Bliss Hospital, and we actually had to stay in the dormitory at City Hospital uh, for their student nurses. That was not fun for any of us because no. racism at its finest, yeah. at its peak, I'll put it. Yeah. Because yeah. they would do ugly things. They and, did. Mm-hmm. But we got through it. So because we knew we didn't have to stay there but three months in and fact, then we that could was leave. One of my highest scores on state board, and I guess I wanted to get out of there so bad. <laughs> <laughs> But even at uh, Malcolm Bliss, we were able to thrive. Mm-hmm. You know, we got through the hardship the because we had skills. each other. Mm-hmm. We had each other to deal with the racism. Yes. I still remember this little girl that I took care of as a patient there called me her nigger nurse. And all I could think is, Lord Jesus, help me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want this little girl to get her whatever. Mm-hmm. But I got through it. Yeah. Yeah, so thank God for that. Um, I think that's all. I can't think of anything other than you mentioned Billy Burst. We talked about Annie Malone's Children's Home. We didn't talk about the clinic. Homer Phillips also had a clinic, an outpatient clinic. clinic. Um, service. Right, and, and, and more jobs, mm-hmm. more opportunities for people in the neighborhood. In fact, that was the last place I worked at Homer Phillips was in the clinic in pediatrics. Okay. And Reverend Jennifer always say when we do a contest with children, that's why I always pass because I work with children. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that's a passion of mine. Yeah. But uh, we had, and in the clinic, they had a lead abatement. 
Uh-huh. And they had all the services, including a dental clinic, uh-huh. an orthopedic clinic, a podiatry clinic, uh-huh. OBGYN, you know, full it service. It was clinic. definitely full mm-hmm. service. Wow. We didn't know how blessed we were. And we even had a cobalt unit before it became popular that they built before they closed Homer Phillips for mm-hmm. radiology uh, oncology. And even closing of Homer Phillips was political. Most because definitely. Homer Phillips was a much better hospital, better staffed, and better. The building was new fully, uh, compared to uh, Starcloth, which was city number one. Fully accredited, but since the city has the city of St. Louis owned both hospitals, they were able to use that accreditation to keep city hospital. Mm. So there you have it. That's our history. Thank you. And I could talk longer, but I won't. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we both talk could. To me just reach out <laughs> yeah we both good okay well thank you so much you're more than welcome okay it's a joy okay